Part 5, Resonators. To accomplish his various synchro summons, Jack's tuners of choice were the Resonators, a series of fiend-type tuner monsters spread across a variety of attributes, and like most tuners, focus on facilitating synchro summons, as well as being durable to live long enough to perform synchro summons. But what in the world possessed the designers to make the primary tuner theme of Jack Atlas, the King of Speed, the Master of Fasta, the card games on motorcycles enthusiast, a bunch of little floating gremlins with audio equipment? Well, a recurring visual motif surrounding synchros and tuners, especially in early 5Ds, is sound. Whether that be Tune Warrior or Frequency Magician, the idea of tuning sounds and instruments have been tied in with the concept of synchro summoning, in parallel with similar phrasing for how you would tune an engine, thus a lot of vehicle motifs. Heck, tuning is one of the most powerful searchers in the game, grabbing any synchron tuner from your deck. And there's the rub, because all the resonators are carrying tuning forks. Ah, uh, even the grimdark series of brutal blood dragons of the abyss have a punny side. I love it. First up is Barrier Resonator, a level 1 light monster with 300 attack and 800 defense, and during either player's turn, you can send this card from your hand to the grave, then target a tuner monster you control. This turn, it can't be destroyed by battle, and you take no battle damage from attacks involving it. Usually, we see the Resonators protecting themselves, so it's nice to see one going out of its way to protect not just Resonators, but any tuner you have on the field. And while the protection doesn't last forever, it does last the entire turn without a limited number of applications, which is stronger than most. So, if you need to ensure your tuner survives a massive attack push, this monster will make sure their aggression isn't a barrier to entry. Chain Resonator is a level 1 light monster with 100 attack and defense, and when this card is normal summoned while a synchro monster is on the field, you can special summon a Resonator monster from your deck, except a copy of itself. Now, while this can trigger if your opponent controls a synchro monster, it's probably for the best you ensure you have your own synchro. I mean, sure, you can still tune it with regular monsters, but Red Dragon Archfiends have a particular quirk where you'll want to have more tuners than non-tuners, and not just for synchro laddering, though you can certainly do that if you wish chaining your summons one after another. Double Resonator is a level 1 fire monster with zero attack and defense, and if this card is normal or special summoned, you can target a face-up monster on the field, and that target is treated as a tuner monster this turn. You can banish this card from your grave, then target a fiend you control, and that fiend is treated as a tuner this turn. This is another instance of an effect that seeks to stack up our tuner count so we have as many as possible, but in a unique twist, it not only lets you have a lot of tuners, it can make sure you keep having tuners even when it's gone by turning one of your fiends into a tuner. So not only can it help fix up your field to get the right synchro you need, it can help with summoning monsters like Ultimaya Zolkin and Ultimil Bish Balkin. Double here gives you a lot of flexibility in your summons, which just goes to show that two heads are better than one. Mirror Resonator is a level 1 light monster with zero attack and defense, and if your opponent controls any number of face-up monsters that were special summoned from the extra deck and you do not, while this card is in your hand or grave, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. And once per turn, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls, and treat this card's level as that monster's original level if this card is used for Synchro Summon this turn. This one is probably the most situational of our Resonators, because it's a little hard to coordinate our opponent's levels without Kaijus, and even then, that's way too many levels for a tuner, but it's always at least a level 1, which is great because it gives you the option to branch out to other levels just in case. And hey, no matter how you use it, you'll always be prepared for the mirror match. Synchron Resonator is a level 1 dark monster with 100 attack and defense, and when a synchro monster is on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if this card is sent from the field to the grave, you can target a Resonator monster in your grave, except a copy of itself, and add it to your hand. Once again, this doesn't check to see if you control a synchro for its summon effect, just that there's one on the field, so keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that, despite the name, this monster's spelling of synchron is different from the one commonly seen in the synchron archetype, so this does not synergize with any of them. But for our own theme, it's incredible, helping the synchro climb you further up the ladder while recovering other resonators to help keep up your momentum. Synchro summoning may inherently cause you to lose card economy, but this resonator makes up for it in space. Spades. Crimson Resonator is a level 2 dark monster with 800 attack and 300 defense, and if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if the only other monster you control is exactly one dark dragon synchro monster, you can special summon up to two Resonator monsters from your deck, 
except a copy of itself. However, you can't special summon from the extra deck, except Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters, the turn you activate either of this card's effects. And this counts before or after you use these effects, so be mindful of how you use it. Since the effect that special summons a bunch of resonators is used while you have a Dark Dragon Synchro, this is largely used to help summon your more advanced Red Dragon Archfiends, either by Synchro Laddering or via the technique of Double Tuning, something we'll get into later on. But, suffice it to say, it's a major step forward for realizing Jack's power in the court of the Crimson King. Force Resonator is a level 2 water monster with 500 attack and defense, and you can send this face-up card you control to the grave, then target a face-up monster you control. And if it attacks this turn, your opponent can't activate cards or effects that target any number of monsters until the end of the damage step. This was one that started out so well before taking a swift nosedive. Having a way to provide an Armade's effect would have been outstanding, but since it only prevents effects that target monsters... I mean, stopping Book of Moon, Compulse, and some of the Forbidden spells would have been great, but once you've committed to applying this effect, any of those cards can be activated way before Attack Declaration. So, despite its Emperor Palpatine impression, this Resonator doesn't have anything resembling unlimited power. Red Resonator is a level 2 fire monster with 600 attack and 200 defense, and when this card is normal summoned, you can special summon a level 4 or lower monster from your hand. And if this card is special summoned, you can target a face-up monster on the field and gain life points equal to its attack. So it can help deploy monsters out of your hand, and if you bring it back for more synchro summoning, you get a nifty chunk of life points for your troubles. Heck, if you've already set up one of your dark dragon synchros, getting 3000 or more is gonna be the norm which feels a little out of character, because with fire, you normally feel the burn. But with Red Resonator, you feel the heal. Clock Resonator is a level 3 earth monster with 1200 attack and 600 defense, and once per turn, this face-up defense position card can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Not really a lot to expound on here, but its level is a point of contention. Our synchro climbing is focused on even levels, so having an odd one doesn't help in very many situations. So above anything else, its protection effect is here to help us buy some time. Creation Resonator is a level 3 wind monster with 800 attack and 600 defense, and if you control a level 8 or higher synchro monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. This can help with our advanced tuning techniques, but when it comes to starting our plays, it's just full of hot air. Dark Resonator is a level 3 dark monster with 1300 attack and 300 defense, and the first time this card would be destroyed by battle each turn, it is not. This is the OG Resonator and has a lot in common with Clock Resonator. This can be used for anything requiring dark tuners, where Clock can fulfill Earth requirements. And while Clock can protect from battle and effect destruction, it only works in defense position. Though I'm certainly not going to sweat missing out on a 1300 attack monster for our offensive pushes. It might be the first to the party, but as Power Creep tends to do, it's made this card's future prospects look, uh, pretty dark. Flare Resonator is a level 3 fire monster with 300 attack and 1300 defense, and a synchro monster that uses this card as material gains 300 attack. Not a bad target to summon off any of our effects that call resonators to the field, a 300 doesn't mean much among the lower brackets of the attack pool, but as we get into the 3000s, the variance isn't that much, so having a few extra points can really tip the scales, and in a heated match, can really get your opponent's temper to flare up. Resonator Call is a normal spell that adds any Resonator monster from your deck to your hand. A wonderful addition since it lets you use any Resonator that fits the situation. Red Resonator is a good general purpose monster for turboing out your monsters, but if your hand is able to take full advantage of it, you can get Crimson Raider when you're ready to pop off. So playing this is a great call. Resonator Engine is a normal spell that targets two Resonator monsters in your grave, and on resolution, you can add any level 4 monster from your deck to your hand. And if you do, return those targets to the deck. Yeah, this grabs any level 4 monster, something that could see play in a variety of decks, if not for the fact that you have to run a bunch of Resonators, which are usually pretty out of place in other decks. But on the flip side, any generic level 4 monster you want to run in this deck can be searched by this card, making for a pretty nifty engine piece. Resonator Command is a quick play spell that has you discarding a Resonator monster to add a level 4 or lower Fiend monster from your deck to your hand. Despite the card art, this will usually be used to trade one Resonator for another, but since it works for any lower leveled Fiend, you could find synergies with Dark World, Burning Abyss, Magical Muskets, all kinds of themes. Or, you know, you could get Ogre of the Scarlet Sorrow, but if you want to command some respect, you'll pick a good card. 
Resonant Destruction is a continuous spell, and each time any number of Resonator monsters are sent to the grave as synchro material, target a card your opponent controls and destroy that target. But Resonant Destruction is destroyed during your second end phase after activation. This isn't once per turn either, so the more you can sync, the more your opponent's cards you can shred. It sucks that it destroys itself, but ideally the game will be over, or you'll run out of Resonators, long before that comes to pass. If anything, this decision packs in a lot of characterization for the Resonators, showing their self-destructive tendencies. Red Carpet is a normal trap card that you can activate if a Dragon Synchro monster is on the field. You target up to two Resonator monsters from your grave and special summon them. This is another great avenue for special summoning Red Resonator. You can utilize the ones with the destruction protection to help as blockers or as free link material. I mean, Crimson does lock you out of those, but if you aren't using it, this does make a free Halk. So no matter what play sequence you're looking to go down, this card makes for a fine welcome mat. Synchro Call is a normal trap card that targets a monster in your grave and special summons it, but it has its effects negated, and if you do, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro summon a Dark Dragon or Fiend-type Synchro monster, using only monsters you control as material, including the summoned monster. Despite needing more setup than either King's Consonants or Synchro, I'd say that Synchro Call is the best card out of this entire trap card Synchro summoning series. You can summon any monster, tuner or otherwise, as long as it complements another monster on the field. And while the summoned monster's effects are negated, if the summoned monster has an effect that triggers when used as synchro material, or just when sent to the grave, you'll get all the benefits from that. And while you can only make Dark Dragon and Fiend synchros, that pool isn't exactly wanting for choices that you can call on. Part 6. Red. While the following monsters don't have a super cohesive theme, they do bridge the gap and support both Red Dragon Archfiend and Resonators, so all these monsters associated with the best primary color will go here. Red Mirror is a level 1 Fire Fiend monster with 0 attack and defense, and when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can send this card from your hand to the grave, then target a Fire Fiend monster in your grave, except a copy of itself, and add it to your hand. And if you Synchro Summon while this card is in your grave, except during the damage step, or the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can add this card to your hand. This is really nifty for recycling Red, Flare, and Double Resonator, as well as... Infernoids, I guess? Not to mention a few of the monsters we'll be talking about in this section. And if you Synchro Summon during your turn, you can get it back and keep doing this over and over again. This is a very strange hand trap because instead of punishing or delaying your opponent, you're recycling cards. So as a piece of support, it's not the best. As a piece of tableware, it's fantastic. This is the coolest candle holder I've ever seen. Red Nova is a level 1 Fire Fairy Tuner monster with 0 attack and defense, and if a level 8 or higher dragon type synchro monster is on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand, but you can only special summon them once per turn this way. And if this card is sent to the grave for a synchro summon that uses 2 or more tuner monsters as material, you can special summon a Fire Fiend monster from your deck in defense position. Now, if you're making one of your double tuning synchros, you probably don't need any help with laddering up to your next boss, but one of the targets you can summon is Red Resonance which means you'll be getting Buku's life points off its effect. And as far as double tuning enablers go, being a free special summon is pretty helpful. It's also named after the strongest of the Earthbound Immortals. Well, if we use the original Japanese name. I'd expect it to be a bit stronger since that's the case, but this doesn't explode if you don't have a field spell, so really, who's the winner here? And speaking of Red Nova, meet Red Familiar, a level 4 Dark Fiend monster with 1600 attack and 0 defense, and you contribute a Fiend monster, then target a Dark Dragon Synchro monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position. And you can banish this card from your grave, then target a Dark Dragon Synchro monster you control, and declare a level from 1 to 8, and that monster becomes the declared level until the end of the turn. This creature is a servant of Red Nova that sought to sacrifice Jack for its revival, and explains why, out of all these Red monsters, Familiar is the only dark, but despite its antagonistic nature, it's actually very helpful when it comes to making our biggest boss monsters, which probably has something to do with Red Nova Dragon being made partly out of Red Nova. The Fiend you tribute for Familiar's effect can be itself, and by banishing itself from the grave, you can modulate that synchro to fit whatever tuner you put onto the board. And honestly, there's something hilarious about the bad guy messing up so bad that they end up helping the protagonist. Amazing. 
Red Gardener is a level 4 Fire Fiend monster with 0 attack and 2000 defense, and during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect while you control a Red Dragon Archfiend monster, you can send this card from your hand to the grave, and this turn, monsters you control can't be destroyed by card effects. So while it doesn't negate anything, it does effectively blank any destruction effect. And while you need to have a Red Dragon Archfiend monster to activate it, it actually provides that protection to all of your monsters, which is wicked sweet. It's also another thing I want to see as part of my home decor, because this is one of the coolest shields I've ever seen. Red Sprinter is a level 4 Fire Fiend monster with 1700 attack and 1200 defense, and when this card is normal or special summoned while you control no other monsters, you can special summon a level 3 or lower fiend type tuner from your hand or grave. This is pretty firmly a piece of Resonator support, and boy howdy is that relevant. Once again, this pairs very nicely with Red Resonator for a bit more life points, and then you can make a level 6 synchro. You can also make a level 5 or 7 based on the Resonator you revive, but trust me, you want to be making 6s, as it's the fastest way to sprint through your combos. Red Warg is a level 6 Fire Fiend monster with 1400 attack and 2200 defense, and when you normal summon a Resonator monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, but its attack becomes halved. This is kind of like the reverse of Red Sprinter, and if paired with a level 2, you can go right into your level 8s, but it only has utility while in the hand and when you normal summon a Resonator, so this has a pretty big potential for bricking, which I wouldn't think the big bad wolf would be associated with. Hmm. Talk about character growth. Part 7, Red Dragon Archfiend. Alright, it's time for the main attraction. In this section, we'll be covering all the Red Dragon Archfiend cards, except Assault Mode because we've already got an episode all about that whole cycle of cards, and it doesn't really have good synergy with the rest of our cards. But I want to end the episode with the big monsters themselves, so unlike usual, we'll be covering the spells and traps first before covering the 5Ds cards, then we'll move on to Arc V, the manga, and round things out with the synchros that never saw broadcast, nor the printed page. First, let's cover Red Dragon Vase, a normal spell that can activate only if you control Red Dragon Archfiend. It draws you two cards, but you can't normal or special summon monsters the turn you activate this card. And until the end of your opponent's turn after this card is activated. Wow, uh, talk about overly cautious card design. We get it, drawing two is one of the best ways to win at Yu-Gi-Oh, but locking off all your summons? Heck, this checks before and after you activate Vase, so you can't even just plop RDA onto the board and activate this, you have to wait a whole other turn. And on top of all that, you're inviting people to argue about the pronunciation of Vase. So really, this card is just toxic from top to bottom, stick with the pot of cards, folks. Scarlet Security is a normal spell that you can activate if you control Red Dragon Archfiend, and it destroys all spells and traps your opponent controls. Now this is some nifty support. It's basically Harpy's Feather Duster for the theme, which you can totally play, though at time of recording, you can just play Harpy's Feather Duster. But I get it, uh, for the time, it was nice to have a card that cleared out back row so your combat-focused deck didn't fold to a myriad of battle traps. So this provided some much-needed security. Burning Soul is a quick play spell that can activate if you control a level 8 or higher synchro monster. You add any card from your grave to your hand, except a copy of Burning Soul, then immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon using monsters you control as material. And for the rest of the turn after this card resolves, your opponent can't target synchro monsters on the field with card effects. Now, mechanically, you could use this for any big synchro deck. Heck, I'm sure Sword Soul would love a way to recycle something like Summit, or whatever you dump off of Taya. But thematically, this calls back to Jack's specific power in the anime, as he's a descendant of the legendary Siner, and thus inherited the power of the Burning Soul, a special technique that can seal away any monster, something that was very helpful when it came to dueling against Red Nova. He even proceeded to absorb Red Nova's power to make one of, if not the, most powerful form of Red Dragon Archfiend, which I guess also makes it an honorary Earthbound Immortal? So with all that being said, of course Burning Soul had to make it in here, but how does it work mechanically? Well, having the freedom to recur any card out of your grave is fantastic, and having the ability to synchro summon at quick effect speed is even better. You have to already have the material for it on field, but you can drop a nasty effect during your opponent's turn or during some kind of targeted interaction. And on top of everything else, all your synchros gain targeted protection for the turn. It's a shame this isn't searchable because this really does feel like the heart and soul of the theme. 
Red Supremacy is a normal trap card that banishes a Red Dragon Archfiend Synchro monster from your grave, then targets a Red Dragon Archfiend Synchro monster you control, and its name becomes the banished monster's original name and replaces its effects with the banished monster's original effects. So this allows you to modulate your effects to broaden your options, and that's the main draw of this card. But as it turns out, the name adjustment can actually be pretty important. Turns out a lot of older support for Red Dragon Archfiend didn't anticipate us playing a whole slew of Red Dragon Archfiend evolutions, so it only works with the original RDA. So if you want to show you believe in Red Dragon Archfiend supremacy, this is the best way to go. Red Rain is a normal trap card that you can activate if you control a level 8 or higher synchro monster, and you banish all monsters on the field except the monsters with the highest level, and any remaining face-up monsters on the field are unaffected by other card effects except their own until the end of this turn. And if a Dark Dragon Synchro monster is synchro summoned to your field while this card is in the grave, you can add this card to your hand. Wow, now this is a ridiculously powerful card. It does necessitate you only control one monster, or all your monsters be at the same level lest you get rid of a bunch of your own, but the payoff leaves your opponent with an open field, paving the way for a monumental push for game. And if that, for some reason, isn't enough to clear the game, a Dark Dragon Synchro Summon gets this right back into rotation to disrupt your opponent's board and seal the deal. With this card in your arsenal, you'll always be holding the reins on your game. Red Cocoon is a normal trap card that has you targeting a Dragon-type Synchro monster you control and equipping it with this card. While it battles an opponent's monster until the end of the damage step, the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent controls are negated. And during the end phase, if this card is in the grave because it was sent there this turn, you can target a Red Dragon Archfiend in your grave and special summon it. So if your opponent has an effect that boosts their attack, it's gone. Does it have any protections? Also gone. Does it have a floating effect after you destroy it? Well, that'll resolve like normal, but hey, you can't get everything. That's what Called by the Grave is for. And no matter how it ends up in the grave, you get the original RDA out of your grave for free. Hopefully, this will trigger during the end of your opponent's turn, but a free monster is a free monster. What gets me is, why a cocoon? Like, egg I might have been able to understand. Dragon eggs have been an agreed-upon part of dragon mythology since forever. But why the bug association? Like, I love Fairbrand as much as the next guy, but if you're going to make a bug dragon, you've gotta commit. The Great Soul is a normal trap card that can activate if a Dragon Synchro monster is anywhere on the field. You special summon up to two Resonators and or level 1 Dragon monsters from your deck. And when a monster effect is activated while you control a level 10 or higher Dark Dragon Synchro monster, you can banish this card from your grave, negate that effect, and if you do, one Synchro monster you control gains 2000 attack until the end of the next turn. That seems like a very specific effect, and that's because it's another anime reference card. Remember how we talked about Fake Jack earlier? Well, this moment comes from when Real Jack turns the tables on Fake Jack's three counterfeit Red Dragon Archfiends by using the power of Majestic Red Dragon, a synchro that needs base Red Dragon Archfiend, hence needing a Dragon Synchro to activate, Majestic Dragon, a level 1 Dragon, and a non-tuner monster, which, um, can't be a Resonator? So uh, if you want to make Majestic, you can just summon two level 1 dragons, or you can summon the Resonators to make the double tuning synchros. And then you have a little extra negation stapled on later for good measure. This card's not just good, it's great! King Scarlet is a hilarious member of the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, focusing on skits and songs that lampoon some of the more... let's call them iconic personalities that you'll see online or in your local game store. It's a... Hey, wait a sec, this isn't a card! Hey man, how'd you end up in my- Okay, for the last time, I'm not doing this bit. Oh, come on. If I don't make the joke, everyone in the comments is gonna get on my case about it. What's the joke? That my name is the same as a card nobody plays? Okay, funny man. How would you handle it? I don't know. At this point, you're better off just writing up some big dialogue about how not funny it is, and then just letting it trail off. Well, maybe I will. Fine. Okay. Uh, thanks for talking with me. It was good to hear from you. Yeah, you too. Say hi to the family for me. Well, gonna have to record that later. In the meantime, King Scarlet is a continuous trap card that you can activate when a Red Dragon Archfiend monster you control battles during damage calculation. You make it so that monster you control can't be destroyed by that battle, and if you do, special summon this card as a normal monster that's a level 1 Fire Fiend tuner with zero attack and defense that's still treated as a trap card. I... Guess it was too powerful at the time to make a trap monster that was a level 1 tuner that you could activate whenever you wanted, huh? Had to... Tie it into Red Dragon Archfiend battling, huh? Look, this section has already gone on for long enough, let's move on to a card that's more worth our time. 
Red Screen is a continuous trap card that keeps your opponent from declaring an attack, and during each of your end phases, you must pay a thousand life points, which is not optional, or this card is destroyed. It might seem weird that there's a condition for not paying on a mandatory cost, but it's there for when your life points are below a thousand. However, there is another way to get rid of this. You can target a level 1 tuner in your grave, and on resolution, destroy this card, and if you do, special summon that target. But Red Dragon Archfiend must be on the field to activate and resolve this effect. So it's like a... better? Wall of Revealing Light? Kinda? It stops every attack, but you do have to keep paying until it goes away. With RDA, you could potentially play this on your opponent's turn, then trade it out for a tuner on your turn and get none of the drawbacks. But that's a pretty wild play sequence, and this time, I don't mean in a good way. What I find funny though, is that this could see play in any deck that makes level 8 synchros. RDA is generic after all, so if you like making those and you play level 1 tuners, this can be slotted in as a way to save you from an OTK. Or you could play this in a deck that just loves its continuous trap cards and has other ways to send it to the grave, so this can fulfill its defensive purpose while fueling your effects. But you'll want to make sure you vet those decks thoroughly before you do so. A proper screening will make sure this finds a good fit. Part 7b, 5Ds. Alright, here's who you've all been waiting for. Before we continue though, I'd like to lead by pointing out that most of these monsters are Dark Dragon Synchros, just so I'm not saying that over and over again. Let's begin with the one that started it all, Red Dragon Archfiend, a level 8 monster with 3000 attack and 2000 defense, requiring generic material. After damage calculation, if this card attacks a defense position monster, destroy all defense position monsters your opponent controls. And during your end phase, you destroy all other monsters you control that did not declare an attack this turn but this card must be face up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. This sets up a very strong flavor for these cards, as well as some interesting play restrictions. For flavor, it shows that RDA won't tolerate any who sit back and rest on their laurels. If you're hiding behind defense position monsters, it'll gladly rip apart those defenses, and if you're not strong enough to attack, then you don't deserve to stay on the field alongside this Archfiend. Funny that it doesn't quite turn that same kind of criticism on itself, since it destroys all other monsters that didn't attack, but I guess self-reflection isn't its strong suit. This also means you shouldn't be summoning anything during main phase 2, since they can't really attack. This made an interesting foil to Stardust Dragon, as its rival protected cards from destruction, while RDA is all about blowing stuff up. And since RDA has stronger stats, it would win in a straight up brawl, but that didn't mesh very well with the competitive landscape at large, that valued Stardust's protection effect. Any old monster could be big after all, so RDA was really only valuable as the biggest synchro at the time to check things like Stardust's, Goyo Guardians, and Thought Ruler Archfiends. Especially that last one. As far as non-fiend Archfiend monsters go, this is Red Dragon Archfiend's territory. Majestic Red Dragon is a level 10 monster with 4000 attack and 3000 defense, requiring Majestic Dragon, a Red Dragon Archfiend, and a non-tuner monster as material, making this the counterpart to Majestic Star Dragon. Majestic Red cannot be destroyed by card effect, and after damage calculation, if this card attacks, destroy all defense position monsters on the field, including your own. Not cool, dude. Once per turn, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls, negate its effects, and if you do, this card gains attack equal to that monster's attack, but both changes only last until the end of the turn. And during the end phase, you target a Red Dragon Archfiend in your grave, return this card from the field to the extra deck, then special summon that target. Of the two majestic monsters, I have a hard time deciding which one is better. Red is immune to effect destruction, but Star can respond to any card or effect activation by wiping your opponent's entire field. Red takes all of a monster's attack attack while negating their effect, while Star can also negate, but instead emulates one of the effects. If you're focused on either RDA or Stardust Dragon, I suppose which one you prefer is already spoken for, but in the broad strokes, Star is better at defending your field, while Red is better at closing out a game. And thankfully, while not all of the new Majestic support works with Red, you can still use Converging Wills Dragon pretty well. Now I just hope that our Converging Wills can make some proper Majestic Red support to go along with Stars. Seriously, why'd they leave this guy all high and dry like that? Red Nova Dragon is a level 12 monster with 3500 attack and 3000 defense, and is the first example of Jack's special synchro mechanic, requiring two tuners and a Red Dragon Archfiend as material. This is referred to as Double Tuning, which focuses more tuners into a single monster, as opposed to Excel and Delta Excel synchros that tune already refined synchro monsters together. 
Red Nova Dragon gains 500 attack for each tuner monster in your grave, so despite what its printed stat line is, it'll usually hit the board as a 4500 attack monster, with the potential to get even bigger. It can't be destroyed by card effect, and when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target the attacking monster to banish this card, and if you do, negate that attack. But during the next end phase, you special summon this card banished by this effect. Hey look, a version of Red Dragon Archfiend that actually can protect its companions. Wow! This card has been made much easier to summon over the years, with the help of several effects that summon multiple resonators, or tuners in general, and this card makes for an exceedingly powerful monster to push for game while resisting destruction removal. It is kind of funny that a single compulsory evacuation device is enough to answer this card, but it is a Nova card, so this gets top marks from me, no notes. Part 7C, Arc V. Red Wyvern is a level 6 fire monster with 2400 attack and 2000 defense, requiring generic material. During either player's turn, if a monster with a higher attack than this synchro summoned card is on the field, you can destroy that one face up monster on the field that has the highest attack. Your choice, if tied. But this effect can only be used once while face up on the field. So if your opponent is rocking a big monster, Red Wyvern can pop it to clear the way. Heck, you can even make it during your first turn, or when your opponent has no monsters, and then get rid of anything bigger once it shows up, since the effect is at quick effect speed. And once you've used it, it makes for great material to synchro ladder with. Heck, this is helpful even in non-RDA decks. Why, Vern, would you ever pass this card up? Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend is a level 8 monster with 3000 attack and 2500 defense, requiring generic material, and this card's name becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while on the field or in the grave. Once per turn, you can destroy as many special summoned monsters on the field as possible with attack less than or equal to this card's other than this card, then inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed. Now this does destroy your own monster, so be careful how you sequence that effect. However, this could work to your benefit, as you burn your opponent for all monsters destroyed with this effect, no exceptions, so you can fill your own field with tiny monsters to load up on the damage. Another amazing part is that this effect doesn't restrict you from attacking with any of your other monsters that turn. You can clear a board, proceed to summon a bunch of monsters afterwards, then clean up. And it counts as the original Red Dragon Archfiend, so it works for all the effects that need the OG. This has basically power crept the original, right down to the fact that Scarlight has 500 more defense. Talk about a glow up. Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend is the Arc V universe representative for double tuning. It's a level 10 monster with 3500 attack and 3000 defense, requiring two tuners and one or more non-tuner monsters as material that must be synchro summoned and cannot be special summoned by other ways. During your main phase, you can destroy all other cards on the field. Also, for the rest of the turn, other monsters you control can't attack. And during either player's battle phase, when a spell or trap card is activated, you can negate the activation, destroy that card, and if you do that, this card gains 5 500 attack permanently. This card is probably a little easier to make than Red Nova Dragon, having a lower level and not needing specifically Red Dragon Archfiend as material. But it's also not nearly as good. Sure, it can board wipe, but it board wipes everything. This is nice if you don't have any cards, but you have to give up anything you've committed to the board if you use this. And you can only attack with Tyrant when you use that effect, which will be a lot of damage but it's still a little jarring since Scarlight had no such restrictions. Its negation effect is also kind of off. It can stop things like mirror forces, but monster effects can go right through, easy peasy. However, nothing says you can't activate your own spells and traps during the battle phase and negating them with Tyrant to cheese that 500 point bonus. Overall, you have better and easier to make level 10 synchros to go into. And if this dragon wants to complain and Tyrant about it, just ignore him. Part 7D, Manga. Hot Red Dragon Archfiend is a level 8 monster with 3000 attack and 2000 defense, requiring generic material. And once per turn during main phase 1, you can destroy all other face up attack position monsters on the field. And monsters other than this card can't attack the turn you activate this effect. While being the manga counterpart to the anime RDA, these dragons seem to go about the same level of brutality, but with different methods. The anime version punishes all those who don't fight for their lives, while Hot Red looks upon anyone who would dare raise a weapon in their arena with disdain and obliterates them right on the spot. But damn it if I don't respect it. It's certainly a lot more effective at clearing a way for attacking directly, especially after the advent of Link monsters. Your preference will come down to whether or not you want to use the support that needs original RDA or not, but hey, some like it hot. 
Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss is a level 9 monster with 3200 attack and 2500 defense, requiring a tuner and a non-tuner Dark Dragon Synchro monster as material. As a quick effect, you can target a face-up card your opponent controls and negate its effects until the end of the turn. And when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target a tuner monster in your grave and special summon it. This advanced version of RDA is one of the best, while being relatively accessible, as you need only a level 1 tuner to upgrade a level 8 RDA, or heck, any Dark Dragon Synchro monster. Ugh, chaotic Magical Dragon, Ugh. And since this works on any face-up card your opponent controls, this doesn't just stop monsters, but can actually ping spells and traps, even normal ones, during the brief period of time they're on the field. This makes Abyss a kind of omni-negate for things on the field that can be targeted, which might sound restrictive, but has more than enough applications to make this a worthwhile summon. And bonus, it summons back more tuners to evolve it even further. Insert another obligatory praise for Red Resonator right here. It may not be a Red Nova Dragon, but as a staunch Burning Abyss player, I knew there was something I liked about this card. Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane is a level 10 monster with 3500 attack and 3000 defense, requiring a tuner and a non-tuner Dark Dragon Synchro monster as material, and it can tribute a monster, then target a Red Dragon Archfiend monster in your grave and special summon it. So if you have a spare monster after Bane's summon, you can just tribute it off to get back whatever RDA you used as Synchro material, probably Abyss. And when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can special summon two tuners with the same level, one from your deck, and another from your grave. Wow, the synchro climbing just doesn't stop, huh? While Bane doesn't have an impressive suite of abilities, it is good at buying back any RDAs that you've used, as well as summoning more tuners to use with them. Or itself. It's kind of like a custom shop to help make whatever RDA you want, so no matter the situation, you'll always be able to make one that's the bane of your opponent's existence. Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity is a level 12 monster with 4000 attack and 3500 defense, requiring two tuners and one non-tuner Dark Dragon Synchro monster as material making this the manga product of double tuning. When this card is synchro summoned, you can activate this effect. For the rest of the turn, your opponent can't activate cards, also cards your opponent controls can't activate their effects, and your opponent can't activate cards or effects in response to this effect's activation. And if this card destroys a monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. And if this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can target a level 8 or lower Dark Dragon Synchro monster in your grave and and special summon it. It's so nice that it can float into a smaller monster to keep you from losing all your advantage if this card gets destroyed. And I guess the Flame Wingman effect is okay, but the real reason to play this card is its first effect. Any time an effect like this shows up, no matter how hard it might seem to get online, somehow the player base will find a way to abuse it. As a thought, turned any two level 4 monsters into the safest OTK slash board setup you've ever seen, Utopic Zexel forced opponents to have the Imperm or else not play the game. And now, King Calamity is here to be a part of this long-standing tradition. Between ways you can already quick synchro like Formula Synchron, to less orthodox means like Synchro Call, there are many ways to throw this onto the board at the start of your opponent's turn, leaving them to only set cards in the face of a 4,000 attack monstrosity. It's certainly difficult to pull off, but so is Utopic Zexel for the time. But once RDA gets its own Numeron call, you better believe we're gonna see this card used in anything that can support it, which would be an absolute calamity for the format. Part 7e, one more lap. Red Rising Dragon is a level 6 monster with 2100 attack and 1600 defense, requiring a Fiend Tuner monster and one or more non-tuner monsters as material. When this card is synchro summoned, you can target a Resonator monster in your grave and special summon it. However, you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck the turn you activate this effect, except Dark Dragon synchro monsters. And during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can banish this card from your grave, then target two level 1 Resonators in your grave and special summon both. While Red Wyvern makes for a strong way to ladder climb while tossing in some removal, Red Rising Dragon can do so with less material by recycling a Resonator rather than having interaction with your opponent. However, considering the amount of destruction RDA can get up to, you aren't missing out on too much. 
Depending on the level of the Resonator you summon, you can go into your level 8 RDAs, or you could make Abyss for some real shenanigans. And on subsequent turns, Red Rising can bring out two level 1 tuners in the form of Resonators to help accomplish your double tuning summons. While the restrictions on this card are pretty hefty, only being able to make Dark Dragons and needing Fiend Tuners locks this pretty heavily into a Jack Atlas focused deck, it's hard to ask for a better way to rise to the challenge. Now, as this video is shown, for the past 14 years, the Red Demon's Dragon has changed and evolved, gaining new powers to stand aside an increasingly competitive field. Time and time again, the new guard has proven its immense strength, but that just means we have to work twice as hard to maintain the title of King. No. We need to work three times as hard. Double tuning is no longer enough. The king and the devil must grasp a new power. And if a nova isn't enough to take the lead, then we'll harness the power of a supernova to blow away the competition. Let loose your savage roar, red dragon, and seize a power beyond creation. Come forth, red supernova dragon! This level 12 Dark Dragon Synchro Monster has 4,000 attack and 3,000 defense, requiring 3 tuners and 1 or more non-tuner Synchro Monsters as material, and must first be Synchro Summoned. This card gains 500 attack for each tuner in the grave, putting it up to 5,500 attack with only the required tuners. It can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, and once per turn, when your opponent's monster's effect activates, or when an opponent's monster declares an attack as a quick effect, you can activate this effect to banish this card, as well as all cards your opponent controls. And once per turn, during the next end phase after this card was banished by its own effect, special summon this banished card. This is one of the biggest deterrents to monster effects that's ever been printed. It doesn't matter where it activates, as long as it's outside the damage step, Supernova can wipe your opponent's board off the map, and then show up to close things out on the following turn with its massive attack stat. And while its synchro material may seem daunting, you have cards like Red Rising Dragon and Crimson Resonator to provide you with all the support you need. And to be honest, it's kind of heartwarming. Despite the world around it getting more and more difficult to be in, Red Dragon Archfiend has found a way to adapt and change through the ages in many forms, in many ways, with many allies to call upon. While this dragon may look fierce, and it works with fiendish friends, these labels mean little in the face of noble action. And much like how the Red Nova Dragons are a byproduct of taking some of the darkest and bleakest things the world has to offer and harnessing them into a force for good, I know that we all have the ability to look at the darkness both within ourselves and without, accept it, tame it, and channel it towards a better tomorrow. We live in a sad, depressing time, and hope is in short supply. But I am here with you. We're all here with you. And each other. So let that burning soul within you shine, no matter how dark things may be. It's what Takahashi-san would have wanted. Thank you all so much for listening, and supporting me through my journey. Every one of you watching has contributed in some way to my continued success, and... I can't begin to show you how much I appreciate that. And while I can't do so for everyone, I'd like to take a moment to continue to show my gratitude to my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander Ashling Waltz, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ava Goule, Adam Zagidel, Avi Chali, Cryptic Gamer, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Howling Zangetsu, Inblink, Ironic, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Larachia, Meteornus, Mighty Action X, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Ruxeth Sarani, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose, Tyler Cranston, and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Nitromo, RGS, Rem T. Bright, Shooting Star 3300, Star Lord 777, The Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. Thank you all so much for watching, and thank you, Kazuki Takahashi, for sharing your story. A story that blossomed into a world that we've all connected to, and has in turn connected me to you, 
and you to everyone else in this community. Wherever you are now, I hope the games are fun. Take care.